this series of videos I am rewinding the main transformer from an ADM3A dumb terminal and I've uh, just finished putting on the final winding so I've got the primary, the uh, high current 5 volt secondary, it's actually an 8 volt uh, secondary, uh, two 14 volt secondaries and then this final 21 volt and um, this is using the uh, double nozzle that I showed in some previous videos so uh, this is um, oh, it's fairly thin wire, it's only 0.5 millimeters uh, the two laid down side by side that's how the original transformer was wound so I decided to retain that and uh, all that's left to do now is to get the final layers of insulation put on and then um, make the terminations to the flying leads uh, I can then start to reassemble the stack and that will be the transformer complete so in this video hopefully we'll get this finished off get it tested and then that will be ready to refit to the uh, uh, the instrument so um, let's get this uh, taped up and uh, on to the next step okay so I have the core wound I've got it insulated I've made all the terminations I've kept them in exactly the same order that they were when I dismantled the transformer. I've kept the uh, relative position of the um, primary and secondary connections the same. Um, of course we don't have all the uh, wires coming up the outside as we did before um, and the side cheeks on the core obviously give us far more protection between the uh, windings uh, and the laminations. Um, because the winding machine and this method of assembly makes this a far more efficient and compact way of putting the turns onto the transformer it's left us plenty of overheads you can see we've got plenty of space left in the core and uh, we could even go up to thicker gauge wire if we wanted to but I've kept it the same as it was it was a bit um, overwound anyway so it should be fine the next thing we can do is take the uh, formers out of the core so uh, if you recall these um, 3D printed um, plastic inserts are there to allow this to be fitted into the uh, CNC winding machine but they also uh, make sure that the core retains its shape so that the laminations will properly fit uh, back into it. Uh, if you don't do that there's a tendency for the cardboard core to either uh, rack and twist or just get crushed when you put the windings on so it's best to put that uh, uh, or something in there to retain the shape and all we do now is pull these out so I'll get these uh, popped out and we'll see uh, how the core looks um, what we're looking for hopefully is these will be loose if they've gone very tight then we may have a problem getting the laminations in but as you can see uh, these are about the same as when I fitted them so uh, that looks quite promising um, no real distortion the side cheeks are not Bowed out if again if you've uh, kind of wound too far to the outside there's a tendency for the cheats to get pushed apart and they can even get pushed completely off the uh, core but as you can see here um, it's fine we've got a nice um, straight uh, profile to the sides and so the next thing is to refit the laminations so I'll just grab those So what we have to do now is get all these put back into the core. I wanted on camera for two reasons. One is it's extremely tedious and boring, um, but also working around the camera is not particularly easy. But uh, in essence, what I'm going to do is starting at one end, I'll put one lamination in one of the laminations in one way, then one in the other way. And I'll keep alternating these until they're all in place. Uh, and what I then do is put the eyepieces in so you'll be left with a series of slots and then you can just push these into the slots so I'll get all the um, E pieces fitted and then we'll get back on camera and I'll show you how I insert these but um, it's a very easy uh, process it's just uh, a bit time consuming there are uh, well over a hundred of these laminations to go in so I'll get that uh, done and uh, then we'll have a look at getting the final assembly done now before I do that just a quick word of caution if you're not familiar with winding transformers then you remember that this had a copper shield around it 
be very careful if you do fit a copper shield it has to go around the outside of the core so in other words it has to go around the outside of this former if you wrap this around the actual core so if you wrap it around here it will form a shorted turn and obviously the transformer won't work or it'll blow a fuse or catch fire so this must go around the outside of the final assembly not around the actual uh, centre windings. Okay well that's all the e-laminations in place as ever the last few were quite a snug fit in the core uh, if you remember there was a gap at the end of the core when I took this apart and this will compress slightly when we put the clamping screws in so we'll get a small gap and uh, we'll put a, probably fit a, a small wedge in there. So now we've got the E pieces in, the next thing to put in place are the I pieces and now it's just really a case of working our way along and slotting each of these in place and pushing them down. So it's as simple as that, just work our way along making sure we don't miss any and um, that will then be the core ready to have the clamping plates put on. What I will do with this is I'll fit the clamping plates, I'll leave the screen off until I've fully tested it. I did a continuity and leakage test before I started assembling it and it seemed fine but it's always worth repeating that uh, after the core's been assembled. It does uh, kind of put some stresses and strain on the core as you uh, push these pieces in so it's always worth rechecking. It's very unlikely with the amount of insulation that uh, is on this there will be a problem but uh, as ever it's well worth checking this uh, as we progress rather than getting to the end and then having to uh, dismantle it to resolve small issues. So I'll get the rest of these fitted and then we can put the clamping screws on and give this a test. That's all the laminations fitted. They all went in quite nice and snugly and uh, if we've got them all aligned properly then the clamping screws should fit through the holes without binding up. If they're not lined up of course then the holes won't all line up so that's looking good. Next thing is to get it all clamped together and then we can actually uh, apply some power and uh, see if it works. Okay I have the transformer bolts and brackets in place so that uh, clamps the core together. Uh, I haven't fitted the screen yet and I haven't lacquered it. I want to be able to get it apart in case there is an issue. It's unlikely but um, it's always worth leaving that step until last. It uh, does of course become much more difficult to get back apart once it's been lacquered. So I have it set up here. I've got the uh, PM100 power analyzer connected again and we're looking for something uh, up around, uh, well the higher the power factor the better. It should stay somewhere fairly close to one. Uh, when we tested it before, when we tested the one that was in the um, second um, ADM, we noticed that it had a relatively poor power factor. Now I expect this to be a bit higher. Um, this is wound a little bit more efficiently so hopefully we'll get a bit of a higher power factor. Um, the nearer to one the better and I've got the uh, multimeter connected to one of the 12 volt windings. So I'll start off with a fairly low uh, incoming mains voltage. We'll be able to see it on the PM100. Keep an eye on the power factor. And we're also listening for uh, any noise coming from the transformer. Usually a sign that it's not very well assembled or the, the core's loose or something like that is it will hum. I've got this on a, a, a workbench that tends to amplify buzz and hum so hopefully we'll be able to hear anything going wrong. And um, fingers crossed we'll get a uh, about 12 volts coming out of this winding. If um, we don't then I've made a mistake somewhere, got the wrong number of turns or um, maybe there's a short or something but let's get it powered up and see what happens. Okay so we'll start to increase the incoming voltage, we're listening for uh, any buzzing hums uh, or any excess current um, appearing on the uh, PM100. So we're getting 1.4 volts coming out of the winding at the moment. We've got 26 volts going in. Let's keep cranking up the power and see what happens. We'll go up to 100 volts and then we'll stop and have a listen for any odd noises. So power factor is still at 1. 
I cannot hear any hum at all. Incidentally, I, I quite often get uh, comments about um, squealing and buzzes and whines on the videos. Quite often that's not a, a real sound, that's coming from the conversion of the video and it's um, processed, so uh, sometimes you might hear noises on the videos that don't actually exist. Uh, I do have a sound meter up in the corner over there that uh, I use for picking up uh, various sounds and um, at the moment if I don't speak there is no audible sound coming off this whatsoever that it's picking up so that's looking quite good. We'll keep going up with the mains voltage, I'll go up to 150 volts, keep an eye on the power factor if that suddenly starts to spike um, before we get to 200 volts or so and we've got an issue. Okay, around 150 volts, no current at all. This is reading down to 1 milliamp and the power factor is still 1. It is connected, we are getting um, voltage coming out so it is looking like um, it's going to be okay but let's keep going up. Go up to 200 volts. Again, still got a power factor of 1, so that's uh, extremely good. The show we're at uh, 50 hertz here in the UK. We're drawing zero power, so it looks like it's a very efficient transformer. And we'll take it all the way up to 12 volts output. Okay, that's looking very promising indeed. So um, we'll crank it all the way up and uh, this should cause the power factor to dip and um, we'll see how much current we're drawing. Hopefully we won't get more than maybe 10 or 15 milliamps. If we get more than that then I may have uh, underwound the transformer but let's uh, wind it all the way up and see what happens. Okay, so 5.6 milliamps, that's extremely good, and the power factor is still up around 0.64, so 14 volts, it's higher than it should be because the, I'm putting more voltage into the transformer than it was designed for. Uh, if we go back down to our nominal mains design point, then we should still have 12 volts which we do. So, okay, well it looks like the transformer uh, rewind is a success. I'll go and check the other windings, make sure they're okay. Um, but it's looking fairly good to, so far. I'll just have a quick look. Okay, so that was our 5 volt uh, winding, that should be 7 volts. Okay, and this one should be around 18.5 volts, which it is. So, okay, well that looks like it's a success at the moment. What I'll do in the next video, rather than just fit, refitting this to the ADM, we'll run it up to um, uh, some decent loads, give it a, a proper test. You can see that um, you know, whole wound transformers can be uh, perfectly usable. And um, as you can see from the results we're getting, um, they can also be um, incredibly efficient. So uh, in the next video, we'll have a look at this on the load, see how it performs, and uh, hopefully we can then use it in the ADM time currently repairing.